Section 10 for the binomial theorem. So our first example, let's go ahead and just multiply out some binomials. Um, and then we'll get into the binomial theorem. Um, so we have a plus b squared. So we know that that's a plus b times a plus b in parentheses. And we'll go ahead and multiply that out. Um, you can multiply it as is, or some of us like using boxes. I like the boxes. So we get a times a is a squared. We get a times b is ab. a times b again is ab and we get b squared. So we can combine the two ab's, so we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. All right, let's try a couple more. So a plus b to the third power would be a plus b, a plus b, a plus b. Um, we already did a plus b times a plus b, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in from part a. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared times a plus b. And again, I'm going to make boxes because I think it'll make it easier, especially now that we have more terms. So we'll have one side be a plus b, and the other side we'll have three terms, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, so our box is 2 by 3. And we just multiply. So a and a squared is a cubed. And I'm just going to go across a, so we get 2a squared and b. So a and a makes a squared. And then the final one is a, b squared. And then bottom row, we get a squared times b. Then we get 2a times b squared. And then bottom, we get b cubed. And do we see any like terms? Yeah, if we look really closely. So 2a squared b, and then we have 1a squared b. Those will go together. And then it looks like we have 2ab squared, and then a regular ab squared. So I'm just going to go in order of powers. So a cubed, and then we get 3a squared b. And then we'll also get 3 for ab squared, and then plus b cubed. All right, let's try one more. So let's do a fourth power. So it's starting to get more and more annoying and the binomial theorem will give us a shortcut, but let's do a plus b to the fourth, which means a plus b four times. There's more than one way to multiply this out. Um, we could do a plus b times a plus b cubed from the last example. Um, for me, what feels more natural is just to do a plus b squared times a plus b squared. So we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared from part a, and a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And so we'll set up a table that's 3 by 3. So if you feel like you're getting better at this, why don't you go ahead and set up that table and multiply? The table makes this a lot easier. multiply we get a to the fourth 2a cubed b and then a squared b squared do the second row we get 2a cubed b and then we'll get 4a squared b squared because we have an a two a's and two b's and then the final one is 2ab cubed bottom row a squared b squared 2ab cubed right just multiplying and then the last one is b to the fourth. So let's go ahead and find some like terms and add this up. So I'm going to, again, go in order highest power for a. So that's a to the fourth. And then it looks like 2a cubed b and 2a cubed b. And that's it. So 4a cubed b. Um, and then let's do a squared. So we have a squared b squared, 4a squared b squared, and then another a squared b squared. So that would make 6. 1 plus 4 plus 1. All right, and then we'll keep going. Um, for a to the first power, we have 2ab cubed and 2ab cubed. So that'll be 4. 
a b cubed, and then the final one is b to the fourth, no like terms. And we multiplied that out. So that took a while, and the binomial theorem will give us a shortcut shortly. Um, but let's see if we notice any patterns between these three examples before we learn the binomial. So do you notice any patterns? So if you have a chance to pause the video, pause and just see what you notice and take some notes. Um, I might notice some things and you might notice different things. Um, but I'll point out what I notice. Um, I notice the powers for A are decreasing by 1. And what do I mean by that? We have A to the 4th, A cubed, A squared, A to the 1, and then this would technically be A to the 0. And then I notice at the same time the B's are going up by 1. So B is at 1, B squared, B cubed, B to the 4th. Do you notice anything else about the powers? Um, something I notice about the powers is that they always add up to the original power. So in the fourth, we have a to the fourth, and then we have three plus one. And then the next one we would have two plus two. So notice every term still has a power of four in a kind of a hidden way. The next one is one and three. Let's do two plus two. 1 plus 3. Or we just blatantly have a 4. Um, in the previous example, right, you'll notice they always add up to 3. So we have 3. We have a to the third. Or we have 2 plus 1. Or 1 plus 2. Or 3. So this will be an important pattern in a second. So individual terms have the same power, I guess we could say. as beginning. You can word it whatever makes sense to you. But they're always matching that power. So that'll be significant when we learn the formula. And then it also looks like there might be a pattern with the coefficients. I'm not sure what that is yet, but notice we have the 4 and the 4 show up twice, the 3 shows up twice, so maybe there's some significance to these coefficients. So we'll learn the pattern of these coefficients shortly. Um, so let's use um, part C to expand this next example, um, and then we'll learn the binomial formula. So I'm going to go ahead and copy what we just learned in part C. So we learned A plus B to the fourth is A to the fourth. You have this just above. 4A cubed B um, plus 6A squared B squared plus 4AB cubed, and then plus B to the fourth. And so what we're going to learn is we can use this to expand anything to the fourth power now rather than expanding again. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace a with x and we'll replace b with negative 2. And so this is a cool trick so we don't have to multiply something to the fourth power ever again. We can just use this formula. So I'm going to replace all the a's with x. So I'm just going to kind of write it below and then add all the information. So I'm just putting x's where all the a's were, putting negative 2's where all the b's were. And so let's see. So we will have x to the fourth plus 4 times x cubed times negative 2. So that's my 4a cubed b. And then we'll have 6a squared b squared. So 6x squared negative 2 squared plus 4a, which is x, b, which is negative 2 cubed, and then plus negative 2 to the fourth. You totally could expand this again, um, but again, those four terms, right, that took a while. That was a lot of multiplications. So I'm just going to simplify the coefficients, and we'll be done. So we get x to the fourth, and then in this next one, we'll get negative 8. I'm going to change it to negative minus 8x cubed, and then in the next one we get 6 and then times 4, negative 2 squared is 4, so we'll get 24, 6 times 4, and then negative 2 cubed is negative 8, 
So negative 8 times negative 4 would be negative 32. X, right, X is still a variable. And then negative 2 to the 4th would be positive 16. And so we expanded X minus 2 to the 4th without doing X minus 2 times X minus 2. X minus 2, X minus 2. So just a different route. So what we're going to do in the next video is actually learn the formula so we can do this for any power um, so that we don't have to do all these multiplications.